today we're going to talk about whether you need to manifest specifically or you can manifest generally. This is in response to a comment I just got. Side note, I, I love when you guys ask questions in the comments. It's always so much fun delving into these, these meaty topics. I love it. Okay, so firstly, your videos feel like a weekly pep talk from a spiritual coach. Very encouraging. Thank you for that comment. Spiritual coach is actually the exact wording I've been using. So uh, we're, we're manifesting together. That's, that's the path I'm on. Okay, so do we have to do introspection to know what we truly want and define those wants? Or can we just leave our wants undefined and trust that our good intentions will manifest how they ought to? This is a great question. So my answer to this is, it depends. Some of us will prefer one path, some will prefer the other. It, it just depends how you, how you like to think, how your brain works. For me personally, I find the most success when I manifest generally. When I tell the subconscious mind, bro, you know, you know what I want. <laughs> All right, I don't need to define it. The universe and your subconscious mind, they're not a monkey's paw. They're not a genie who's trying to trick you. They're not gonna trip you up and go, ah, well, you weren't specific enough, so I'm gonna give you a shitty wish. You know, it doesn't work like that. The only reason it might appear like that sometimes is because you yourself put roadblocks up because of limiting beliefs. So if you're trying to manifest someone specific, but deep down you're expecting them to betray you, that's how it's gonna play out. And it's really easy to think, oh, the universe is out to get me, blah, blah, blah. No, it's because you already have that belief set up, queued up, ready to go, okay? So the other path is to be very specific, deliberate. And I believe from my observations from, let's say the messages I get, and my observation of other coaches, I believe this lines up perfectly with what Ra said in The Law of One, which is a fantastic book and I recommend everyone read it, especially if you're interested in like, shall we say, the law of the universe and, and all the nitty gritty little details. There's a lot of fun asides, but the, the basic principles, the premise is invaluable. So Ra talks about how there are two parts towards manifestation, essentially. There's the path of the magician, I believe is, is what Ra says, and the religious path. And the way I interpret what was said here is you can either approach it from the analytical mind or the emotional mind, okay? So the, shall we say, religious path is you're not, you're not thinking about the details. You're not necessarily training your conscious mind to, to only focus on the things you want. You're feeling your way through the process. So this is the concept of trusting that the subconscious mind, that the universe, that God already knows what you want because they do. Okay? Like I said, the universe isn't a monkey's ball. It's not a genie trying to trick you. It knows what you want. The only person standing in your way is you. So this is the path of trusting. This is the path of, of faith, of emotion, of music, of art and beauty and whatever, whatever. You know, you feel it out. It's very, it's very intense, like, uh. The other path is to train your mind, like you're going to the gym. Train it such that no thought crosses your mind without you saying so. And you see these, these guys on YouTube all the time, and I wanna be very, very clear here, no path is better or worse than the other. It's a choice. Do you wanna take the, the masculine path of, of training your, your mind and having full control, or do you wanna take the feminine path of feeling it out, accepting, sinking into it? For me personally, the feminine path works better for me because I'm a creative. I, I, I've done like brain tests and like it's off the chart emotions and creativity. That's just me. I'm not an analytical person at all. <laughs> um, does that mean that I, I couldn't be, that I couldn't find success with the analytical uh, brain training part? No, I probably could. It's just, why? Why if, if the emotional path works so well for me already, you know? Uh, so, so that's my answer. It depends on how you think. 
So the next part of the question was about self-sabotage and we're gonna get into it a little bit deeper here. Because for me, it feels like if I defined my wants slash desires and then tried to manifest them, I might end up sabotaging myself because I would be focusing on them too much. So firstly, if that is what you believe, then that is what will come to pass. Okay, so just on the face of it, assuming nothing, that's how I read it. That you're maybe worried you're going to sabotage yourself and that will lead to you sabotaging yourself. Now, let me read into it a little bit further and make some assumptions. You've said that you, you feel like if you define your wants, desires, and then try to manifest them. So you feel like, all right? So this is maybe suggesting that you know your preference. You know that, that maybe even the wording you've used, and this is like pure coaching, just for context, I've done a p coaching course, nothing to do with spirituality, but on the side, it's, it's quite remarkable how close pure coaching gets to spirituality. All the lecturers were tiptoeing around it, and like most of them were into Joe Dispenza and stuff, but they never fully went there. I don't understand why, you know, but the wording you used, feel, that already indicates to me that you, like me, are a emotional thinker, which is cool. You know, every way you could possibly think is cool. Uh, but there's maybe an insight into the path that might work better for you, okay? You feel that you're going to sabotage yourself if you try to manifest very specifically. So have a play around with it. Manifest generally. Now I'm going to give you some examples between the two. And I think for me, at least the best way I can illustrate this is uh, manifesting a specific person versus manifesting a specific type of person. So that's being very specific and focused. I want this person to show up in this way versus I want this type of person and I don't care who it is. Just bring them into my life. I want this experience, which has typically worked better for me. So when I've tried to manifest a specific person because of my own blocks, and I want to be 100% clear about that because of my own blocks, they show up in the worst way possible. All right. So I, I manifest a specific person. They come into my life. They, they drop hints of like how I want them to behave. But because I already have a belief in who they are and an expectation in how they're going to behave, I'm putting limitations on it. I'm putting blocks on it. Or even just the, the, the concept that, oh, well, this person is like this, so I have to manifest in this way. No. I'm shooting myself in the foot with that one. I've already set myself up for failure. Okay? So the way you need to go about that is to completely redefine the meaning behind how they be how they behave. Okay, so if you're trying to manifest a specific person and they don't really talk to you, they're a bit standoffish. Like they're around in your life, they're not completely like like fuck off, buddy. I don't want to be around you. But you know they're not really into you the way you want, and you're trying to manifest them being into you. You're already thinking in like it's probably not going to work, all right? So you need to completely redefine why they're behaving the way they are. So you might be telling yourself, oh, they're kind of standoffish. Maybe they don't like me. So you're on the back foot. You're in lack. Instead, tell yourself they're distant. They're standoffish because they're so into you and they're shy. They're nervous. They're worried that you don't like them. Okay. See how we've taken the exact same like physical outcome and redefine the why. This is how you do it. It's exactly like, this is the advice I give to my students as well. In the case of, of like stage fright or nerves just in general, biologically speaking, excitement and nerves, anxious, like being anxious, anxiety, sorry, that's the word I'm looking for. Um, it's biologically identical. All right. So when you feel anxious, you can tell yourself, no, 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 no. I'm excited. I'm not anxious. I'm excited. And you can flip the script, swing the pendulum. If you want to speak hermetically, all right? 
All right, so let me give you the, the other option here. Where I've, this is where I personally find the most success. Manifesting generally. Several months ago, I wanted to manifest a very specific type of person, someone who was spiritual, into my life. I went to, to bed thinking, no, 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 I actually spoke to my higher self. I said, went to bed and I said, all right, help me find a spiritual person. I use, I can't remember the specific wording I used, but I used something that meant something to me. All right, I wasn't saying like, I want them to be this and that, and this and blah, 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 listing off qualities. I'm like, you know what I want. Let's get down to brass taxi. You know what I want. So I used one term that was like an umbrella term, all encompassing for what I wanted. And I let myself trust. I went to sleep, I forgot about it. The next day it happened. That's how quickly it can happen, all right? And I don't believe that that's because that method is more powerful. I believe it's because that method was right for me. Okay. Let me give you an, another example here. Have you ever been in a situation where you've been interested in someone, but they appear to not be interested in you? And you're like, you know, you're a bit desperate around like, oh, how do I get them to like me? And then suddenly you like, you get to know them a little bit better. And then you realize, oh, like they, they're doing some things that are real turnoffs. They're not the kind of person I want at all. And then someone you already knew, you didn't really pay attention to out of nowhere shows up and you go, oh wait, I'm actually kind of into this person after all. All right. Remember, time isn't linear. Okay. So it's really easy to think, well, hang on, why, why didn't it work manifesting this specific person? And then why did I end up getting this other person that, that I wasn't focusing on? There's part of your answer there because you weren't focusing on them, right? But they weirdly ended up being the right person. So it's really easy to think that you can't manifest someone specific because of this chain of events. I feel like this is a pretty common thing that a lot of us have experienced. But remember, time is not linear. All right. So hear me out. The way you see it is this. This is the this is your perception of the passage of time. You like someone, they don't like you, they do something, you stop liking them. All right? But let's rearrange this. You stop liking them. So they don't like you. And the rest is inconsequential. which explains why the person you weren't focusing on may have suddenly shown up and been interested in you even before you were interested in them because you know what you want. You don't have to verbalize it. You know what you want. And then the universe, subconscious mind, God, whatever goes, all right, there you go. That's what you want. You just don't know it yet. So they show up before you even know what you want. But time isn't linear, so which one came first and does it matter? <laughs> okay, I hope that answers your question. I look forward to more questions in the future. As always, take what resonates and discard the rest.